In today's video, I am going to show you how to call an existing web API from a C-sharp application. We are going to call the Spotify web API to display new releases on a new web page. You can follow the same steps to call any web API. My name is Pat. If you are new here, consider subscribing. Let's get into it. Getting data from Spotify API is a two-step process. We need to get an access token. With the token, we can make requests to the web API. To use the web API, you need to create an account. You can create one for free. Before requesting data, we need to register the application. This is not necessary if you are not using user data, but there are limitations if you do not. Let's go to the Spotify developer website. In the dashboard section, log in with your credentials. Let's create a new app. The name is Web API Tutorial. In the description field, we add Tutorial. Check all the boxes. Click on the Create button to create the app. Once the app is created, you can see the client ID and the client secret. We will need them for the authorization phase. Now let's create a new project in Visual Studio 2019. Select ASP.NET Core Web Application. Let's call it Consume Spotify Web API. In the next dialog, we select ASP.NET Core Web App. Click on the Create button to generate the project. In C Sharp, we use the HTTP client class to make HTTP requests. There are many consumption patterns when you need to use the HTTP client. For this tutorial, we are going to inject the HTTP client into a service through dependency injection. Let's start by requesting an access token from the Spotify account service endpoint. We create a folder named services. We had an interface called I Spotify account service. We declare a method that returns a string, which will be the access token. The string is wrapped in a task because we are going to call this method asynchronously. The name is getToken. It takes as parameters the client ID and the client secret. These two are needed in the request. Let's create an implementation of this interface. We add a new class called Spotify Account Service, which implements the I Spotify Account Service. We declare the HTTP client inside the constructor for injection. If we take a look at the documentation, we need to make an HTTP pass request to the following endpoint. We need to provide an authorization parameter in the header. We need to provide a body as a form URL encoded. Let's translate this into C Sharp code. The request is represented by an instance of HTTP request message. The first argument is the HTTP verb. In this case, it's a post. And the second argument is the URI. We provide the string token, which is the relative path. The base address will be declared when registering the service with the dependency injection. To provide the authorization in the header, we set a new instance of the authentication header value class on the authorization property of the request header. The first argument is the type of authentication. In our case, it's basic. The second argument is a string that combines the client ID and the client secret encoded in base64. The request content takes an instance of the form URL encoded content class. It takes as an argument a dictionary of string as a key and a string as a value. The key here is grant type and the value is client credentials. The request object is done. We send the request by invoking the send async method on the HTTP client. 
We call the ensure success status code on the response object to make sure our request succeed, otherwise an exception will be thrown. Now let's read the response. We get the content of the response as a stream. We need to deserialize this stream into an object. We don't have that object yet. Let's create a new class called out result. This class will be the recipient of the response. This class needs to be created according to the JSON result of the authentication. We have a sample in the documentation. Let's convert it to a C sharp object. We copy the JSON content. In Visual Studio, we go to edit, paste JSON as classes. Visual Studio has created a new class. Let's rename it to auth result. You can notice that the properties are not named according to C-sharp naming convention. For the sake of simplicity, we will leave it as is. Let's go back to the get token method. We deserialize the stream into the auth result. Let's add a using because the stream is disposable. We return the access token property. The service is done. Let's register it with the dependency injection system. Let's go to the startup class. In the configure service method, we invoke the add HTTP client with the I Spotify account service and its concrete implementation. We also configure the HTTP client base address. With this code, the I Spotify account service will be resolved with an instance of Spotify account service. The HTTP client will be injected into the Spotify account service. The creation of the HTTP client is done by the HTTP client factory. Now we can test the request of an access token. Let's go to the home controller. We declare the I Spotify account service, which will be injected at runtime. In the index method, which is called when the home view loads, we invoke the get token method of the I Spotify account service interface. The method need the client ID and the client secret. Let's declare them in the app settings. We had a new section, Spotify, and we copy and paste the client ID and the client secret here. Let's go back to the home controller. Let's add the I configuration interface, which will allow retrieving configuration settings. Let's add the client ID and the client secret from the app settings as arguments. Let's run the app. The breakpoint is hit. Let's inspect the token variable. Yes, it's filled with the token access. Now we can request new releases from the Spotify web API. Let's create another interface called iSpotify service. This interface has a single method that returns a list of release. We will create this class later. The name of the method is get new releases. It has three parameters. The first two will help filter the request, the country code, the limit, and the last one is the access token for authorization. Let's create the release object. It has a name, artist, date of release, an image, and a link that will open the Spotify web page. Let's create an implementation of the iSpotify service. We call it Spotify service. We declare the HTTP client in the constructor. It will be injected at runtime. In the get new releases method, 
We are going to add a notarization header to the HTTP client using an instance of the authentication header value class. This is a bare token. We pass the access token. We need to make an HTTP GET request. We invoke the GET async method on the HTTP client. The method takes the endpoint URI as an argument. We use a relative URI. We will set the base URL when registering with the dependency injection system. We make sure the request succeed. Now we need to deserialize the response stream into a C-sharp object. Let's try the request in the Spotify console so we can copy the JSON result. So this is the result of the request. Let's copy it. In Visual Studio, we create a new class called get new release result. We paste JSON as classes. All the classes needed to deserialize the JSON object are created. Let's rename the root object. We go back to the get new releases method. We deserialize the response stream into an instance of get new release result. The method signature states that the return type is a collection of release objects. So in the class get new release result, that corresponds to the item class. So let's transform the collections of the items to a collection of release object using link to object. The service is ready. Let's register it with the dependency injection system. We invoke the add HTTP client method on the service collection. We configure the base address of the HTTP client. We add another default header that says that we expect a JSON as a return type. Now we can test retrieving new releases. Let's go to the home controller. We declare the I Spotify service in the constructor. In the index method, we invoke the get new releases method. We pass the country code of France so we can get new releases from France. We set the limit of the records to 20 and we pass the access token. Let's run the application. The breakpoint is hit, so let's inspect the new releases variable. Okay, we got some data. Now let's display the result in a view. Let's refactor the following code. We put the code inside a method called getRelease. If there is an error during the call, we return an empty list of release object. We pass the release list in the view. And let's edit the ohms view. This is a strongly typed view. So we declare the model as a nigh enumerable of release. We iterate over the model, which is the list of release. And we display each release inside a card. We show the artist, the name, the release date, the image, and a link that will open the Spotify web player in a new tab. Let's test the application. Now we have a view that displays new releases from Spotify. That's it for this tutorial. If you like it, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you soon.